The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. It's coming on email, it's okay. Doesn't show your screen, it just shows you. Please turn the microphone back on. Good morning, everybody. This morning, we're here to talk about roof market trends, fleece back membrane, and urethane adhesives. What a beautiful morning it is today. Beautiful morning to talk about fleece back and urethane adhesives. I'm Greg Jones with Premier Building Products, and any day is a great day to talk about fleece back membranes and urethane adhesives. But we're glad you're here this morning. My contact information is on the screen. I can be reached at greg at premierbuildingproducts.com. And the provider number is K031 and course ST, SDT110. A little bit about Premier Building Products. We are manufacturer's representatives for Division 7 for commercial roofing products. And we handle Carlisle Syntex single ply, Bilco roof hatches and smoke vents and safety rails. Metal Era Edge Metal, Georgia Pacific Dens Deck cover boards. And then on the slope side, we handle terracotta sloped roofing tile from Ludoizzi, very beautiful high end terracotta, and then whip underlayments from Carlisle. A little bit about Carlisle Construction Materials. It's part of Carlisle Companies. Carlisle celebrated 100 years in business last year. And the construction materials business encompasses single ply roofing, EPDM rubber, PVC, and TPO, and then polyiso roof insulation, expanded polystyrene insulation. Uh, they manufacture adhesives, cover boards, air barriers, and waterproofing products. This is an AIA accredited presentation, so it is copyrighted and we will keep all the material generic in nature and at the very end we'll answer any questions you may have and we'll tell you a little bit about some unique product offerings from Carlisle Syntech. So thanks for being here today. Description of the course 
for this morning is we're going to go over the physical characteristics of the various types of single ply membranes that utilize a fleece backing. We'll tell you a little bit about the fleece and why it is a unique and beneficial product to specify along with single ply roofing and some of the different application methods for urethane adhesives. So we'll talk about some of those physical properties, the benefits, and uh, we'll give you some examples of where fleece back has been used and some of the performance characteristics. If you have any questions, you can type a question while we're giving the presentation and we'll answer any questions you may have at the conclusion. All right, so what is a fleece back membrane? So fleece back is a, is a single ply membrane that would have a polyester fleece attached to the bottom side. And that can either be extrusion bonded to a, a thermoplastic or an EPDM would use a hot milk technology to fuse that fleece onto the bottom side of the membrane. So that's what it is. Why would you use a fleece back membrane? three key reasons why you would use it. It greatly enhances the puncture resistant resistance of single ply roofing membranes. You can get anywhere from 40% greater puncture resistance and 180% greater tear resistance. So just that 55 mil fleece greatly enhances the performance. It also greatly enhances the hail resistance of that uh, membrane. And then it also provides much greater resistance uplift in pounds per square foot uplift pressure. And testing at Factory Mutual has revealed that it passes up to a 945 PSF uplift resistance in certain applications. So where would you use fleece back? It is a little more expensive than your typical bareback single ply membrane. So we typically see fleece back being specified on mission critical facilities such as schools, hospitals, data centers, and government facilities. One of the nice things about it is it's used for both new construction and re-roofing, but it is very low odor to no odor and no noise and no drilling into the deck with the use of the urethane adhesive. So for re-roofing applications, it is a very, very good product to use. So let's look at the single ply membrane options for fleece back. You have the thermoplastic family of products, which is the TPO, thermoplastic polyolefin, and the PVC, the polyvinyl chloride. These would utilize a heat welded seam. So that's a contrast to a thermoset product that we'll talk about in a minute, like EPDM. So very close up view of a welding machine that will blow air in between adjoining sheets in the side lap. And then you also treat the end lap and any details. And that will blow air out, you know, in around the 1000 degree area. It will vary based on ambient temperature. Test welds will be made at the beginning of the work session, and you'll actually uh, test that to make sure it's welding properly. Typical construction of the membrane is there's a top ply. With either a PVC or a TPO, there will always be a reinforcement scrim, and that can either be polyester, which is by far the most popular choice, and or fiberglass. Sometimes fiberglass is used in the fleece back applications. Fiberglass, just like in carpeting, lays down very, very flat. And so you also have a bottom ply, and then you'll have the fleece backing on the very bottom side of the membrane. Some of the benefits of TPO, as you can see in the photo, it's white, it's bright, it's highly reflective. It's extremely heat and UV resistant. You can recycle TPO. It's a very durable, tough membrane. 
It's been around since the early 1990s in the US and it has very good puncture resistance. On the polyvinyl chloride side, you have PVC and PVC KEE, which is a beefed up version of the plasticizer in the PVC sheet called ketone ethylene ester. Some of the benefits of PVCs are that they have been around since the early 1970s in the US. And they're very, very resistant to chemicals, animal fats, vegetable oils. Very sustainable product because it comes from ingredients that are not oil based. So the key ingredients that go into polyvinyl chloride are natural gas and salt. It uh, comes from salt water. End result is it's very, very fire resistant. You can heat weld the seams and you can recycle PVC and KEE at the end of their service life. I mentioned fire resistant. Of all the single ply sheets, PVC will have the greatest fire resistance in terms of burning brand and flame, uh, spread of flame. Burning brand would be embers that would land on a roof from an adjoining or, or neighboring building and spread of flame would be flame spreading out of a window and coming up over the rooftop. The KEE is the premium uh, resistant product in terms of chemical resistance, in terms of its ability to resist dirt pickup and any type of growth, uh, mold, algae, et cetera, on the top of a roof. So when you look at the thermoplastic products in a fleece back form, here's just a quick look at a ribbon space attachment of urethane adhesive with a gentleman applying the membrane into that adhesive on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, they're putting down the, the membrane into the adhesive, and then they will hit that with a 150 pound weighted roller to make sure that that fleece is embedded into that urethane adhesive. When that fleece is embedded into that adhesive, you, you have an interlocking bond with the fleece fibers, which is very, very strong. When you look at fleece back TPO and PVC, it's available in three thicknesses. It's 100, 115, and 135. So that's 45, 60, and 80 mil membrane with the 55 mil fleece. And there are a number of different colors that you can get fleece back in. And what that does with that fleece is it provides greater thickness, much better puncture resistance, and greatly enhanced tear resistance. I'm gonna show you some tests that show puncture resistance. The first one is the ASTM test. And it actually will drop a puncture head, kind of a sharp, blunt object into the membrane. And we'll compare and contrast a modified system, a modified bitumen multi-ply system with a fleece back single ply system. So here you have a mineral cap sheet and a type four felt and a base sheet. And as you can see, all three were penetrated. That's real world, that, that could happen on a rooftop. Same test. In this case, it's fleece back TPO. And although it did dent it, didn't penetrate. And then the other test method for puncture resistance is the federal 101C test. Well, they're actually put pounds of resistance towards the membrane and measure how long it takes to break through. And the first one is an SBS modified sheet. At 189 pounds of resistance, it completely penetrated through the modified sheet. 
with a police back TPO at just 45 mil and 55 place, it was 356 pounds of resistance. So quite a difference. So again, there were two separate tests, kind of measuring the toughness of the police back system. And that first test was the ASTM D5635. And you can see it's measured in joules and it was measured with a 60 mil and 80 mil TPO versus five different suppliers of SBS modified bitumen. And the police back membrane outperformed each of them in this particular test. Same thing with the Federal 101 puncture test. This time, all three thicknesses of TPO police back were measured and each greatly outperformed the SBS modified systems. Looking at the PVC, the results were fairly similar. Big jump when you move to the 80 mil, 135 total thickness with the fleece and same with the Federal 101C test. EPDM, great product. Been on the market since the early 1960s. Developed here in the United States, comes in black or white. And it has unmatched weatherability and hail resistance. It has fantastic hail resistance testing. Great overall life cycle cost. It has the best resistance to UV radiation of all of the single ply systems and can be used in any climate. Key difference here with EPDM versus the TPO or PVC is that it will use taped seams. And typically with a fleece back EPDM, the tape will be on the seam already. So once that tape is on the seam, you'll prime it and then you'll roll it in and then pull the release on that tape and just roll it in and make sure that it's completely tight. Place back EPDM also is available in three thicknesses, 100, 115, and 145 mil. Again, it's available in black or white. And just versus regular 60 mil EPDM, you get greatly enhanced performance characteristics. Just adding that fleece would add 67% greater thickness, 40% greater puncture resistance than normal 60 mil EPDM, and 180% greater tear resistance. So it is greatly enhanced in terms of its strength. When you look at the same testing, EPDM in all three thicknesses, 100, 115, and 145 mil, greatly outperform the modified bitumen products. The other thing about fleece back versus modified bitumen is it's a lot less weight on the roof than an SBS system. And here you can see the Federal 101C puncture test. And the EPDM is greatly, again, uh, outperformed the regular membrane. So urethane adhesives, important part of the total package for most fleece back systems. Urethane adhesives are used to attach both the insulation and the membrane, as well as a cover board over top of the insulation. So it's an all-in-one product. One of the key benefits of using urethane adhesive for insulation attachment and cover board attachment is it greatly reduces the thermal bridging and thermal loss associated with the thermal conductivity of mechanical screws and plates. 
So with no mechanical fasteners, uh, that can lead to losing three to 8% of the insulation value. So you get a great enhancement by using the urethane adhesive. Now, you can certainly mechanically attach first layers of polyiso, and you may consider putting secondary layers down in urethane adhesive or your cover board down in urethane adhesive. It doesn't have to be all or nothing. Depends on the circumstance. Sometimes in a re-roof application with interior occupants, you simply do not want any noise. And in that situation, you may want to go strictly with all urethane adhesive. It also depends on the deck type. Uh, certain decks are harder to penetrate with mechanical fasteners. So you may elect to use the urethane adhesive. But the key attributes here are that it is universal and that it's used for both. There's no VOCs, there's no fastener noise, there's no odors. It does add a little bit of R value. One of the nice things about it is it's energy absorbing and impact resistant. So it has a little uh, bit of flex to it. And it, it does create that interlocking bond with the fleece fibers. One of the great things about this urethane adhesive is that it is compatible with a number of different types of roof decks, including steel, which you see in the picture here. Sometimes you have conduits on the underside of a steel deck and it's really impossible to put fasteners and plates in those areas and you can certainly use the urethane adhesive. It's also great with concrete, lightweight, insulated concrete, gyp decks, tectum decks, and uh, wood decks. The other great thing about the urethane adhesive, it is compatible with just about every type of insulation product. Not only the polyisos, but the expanded and the extruded polystyrenes. These two types of products can be impacted negatively by solvent-based bonding adhesives, et cetera, but they are good to go with the urethane two-part adhesive. You can also attach cover boards. And the other thing is you can use the urethane adhesive over top of spray polyurethane foam systems. So let's look at some installation techniques for installing urethane adhesive and then the uh, membrane itself. So we'll look at how you install the insulation and how you install the membrane. There are a number of different ways to install or use the urethane adhesive. And it depends on the equipment that the contractor has. In this photo, there's some heavy duty uh, equipment that utilizes a full spray application. You can see that the contractors are being mindful of wind. And so they have a wind screen in place and some safety equipment on themselves. And they are doing a full spray application to install the roof insulation. When installing roof insulation, it would be preferred to use a four by four rather than a four by eight insulation board. They'll let that urethane adhesive rise, and do what we call a string test, where they'll dip their fingers into that adhesive and they want to see a string that develops in between their fingers. And then they'll set the insulation in place. And there are different ways to install. We showed the full spray, but there's also ribbon spacing. And so there are patterns for field perimeter and corner that where you can use ribbons in lieu of a full spray. And this is just a look at the ribbon technique. In this picture, they're putting a cover board over top of the polyiso. And then again, they'll roll in with a 150 pound weighted roller. For membrane adhesive ribbon spacing, same thing. You'll have different patterns for different portions of the roof. 
Typically on the membrane, it's going to be six inch on center, but four inch on center bead spacing would be equivalent to full spray because once you put the membrane or insulation into that four inch spacing, it will spread out. And when you hit it with a 150 pound weighted roller, you'll in essence have full coverage of adhesive. So here they are sliding the fleece back membrane into the ribbon. When that adhesive comes out, it's in a liquid form and it will quickly begin to rise. You don't want to immediately stick the membrane or insulation into the wet bead. You want to let it rise about a minute or two and do that spring test. As you can see in this photo, the ribbons have risen. He's checking the string. They'll slide the membrane in, and the gentleman with the 150 pound weighted roller is right behind him. Wearing gloves to check that string time. If you want to eliminate the telegraphing of the ribbons through the fleece back membrane, you'll want to tighten that bead spacing. If aesthetics are not important, you can go with a 12 or six, depending on the warranty that is required. But if aesthetics are important, the recommendation would be to go to a tighter bead spacing of four inches or a full spray. Key here is once you put that membrane into the adhesive, just to make sure you do use the weighted roller. So again, another view of a full spray method. Attaching the membrane this time. There are other ways to attach fleece back membranes. The newest form is a hook and loop method. You also have a water-based adhesive. You can install certain versions of fleece back with hot asphalt or cold applied asphaltic adhesive, or you can mechanically attach fleece back in certain applications as well. So let's take a look at the hook and loop, brand new product. It has no VOCs, it has no odors, it has no temperature restrictions, and it is FM rated. The hook and the loop would have a special facer on the insulation or substrate, and then a special fleece on the backside of either an EPDM or TPO, and it simply sticks in place. You might say, would a hook and loop hold? Yes, it would. It has up to an FM 1-90 uplift rating. That's 90 pounds per square foot. You can also use a water-based bonding adhesive for fleece back, a one-side wet lay-in water-based adhesive, which is low VOC and odorless. Some of the people that have used traditional asphaltic systems, use the fleece back in an asphalt system. And they can either put a base ply of asphalt and use the modified bitumen as a cap sheet. Key advantage here is that fleece back cap sheet would be a lot wider than a traditional modified bitumen granular surface cap sheet. It has the rugged durability that we've discussed about the fleece, and it has the asphalt attachment. In my particular market area, we don't see a lot of asphalt attachment, just simply because there aren't as many contractors out there that are doing a lot of hot asphalt work. 
But some people may look at a cold process adhesive. Both of these applications, the hot asphalt and the cold process adhesive, which is an asphalt based adhesive, would utilize a heavier duty fleece so you don't have bleed through from that adhesive or bitumen into the membrane itself. You can also mechanically attach fleece bags. So there is a mechanically attached TPO product with a special fleece designed specifically for direct, to applica direct application to wood decks where you can achieve a class A rating. In this particular instance, you may have all the insulation requirements met underneath the deck, and so you don't need a lot of insulation on the top surface. So let's take a look at some of the performance characteristics of fleece bag. Hail, we talked about it at the beginning. When you look at a map of the United States, you can see that the south central area typically gets hit hardest by hailstorms. But if you look closely in the Carolinas, from Atlanta, Georgia, all the way up Interstate 85, is a pretty big area for hail. We've had quite a few hailstorms in the Carolinas here in the past few years, and it does great damage not only to shingle roofs, it does great damage to flat roofs as well. And so one of the key attributes of the fleece back systems are that they will pass a class four hail impact, UL 2218. And they also have an FM severe hail classification. EPDM and TPO both pass the three inch hail test at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's pretty stellar testing for hail resistance. Uplift performance and wind resistance. This really came to light a few years back when Superstorm Sandy hit the Northeast. Very high winds in and around New York City area and New Jersey. A project in that area was hit hard in the construction process. Tremendous amount of damage all around. But the fleece back system that was not entirely completed was left intact while most everything else was destroyed. Another application of resistance is a tornado ripping this uh, airline hangar and the roof system remained completely intact. Just a key attribute of a fleece back system is its uplift performance and wind performance. So let's look at those uplift ratings. You can achieve up to a 945 PSF rating to polyiso and 990 PSF to polyiso adhered to a vapor barrier. Those are stellar, stellar uplift ratings and that's on a concrete deck. Over lightweight insulating concrete, 270 PSF lightweight concrete over structural concrete and then also 240 PSF over a tectum deck. These are by far higher uplift ratings than standard bareback single ply membrane. One of the great things about fleece back is it's also an excellent option for recover. So you can go directly over an existing gravel surface BUR. The contractor would simply make sure they suck all loose gravel from that membrane they would install insulation in the urethane adhesive, typically install a cover board over top of it, and then install the fleece back over top of the cover board in the urethane adhesive. 
Same thing, can go directly over modified cap sheet. Great application for a recover for place back. Can even go over certain aged single plies. Not all single plies, you would need to check in advance, but certain single ply membranes can be recovered with fleece back and urethane adhesive. It's also an interesting solution to retrofitting standing seam roofs. You know, you have your flute filler and then you have multiple layers of insulation. This is a very quiet way to re-roof a standing seam system. So again, for lack of disturbance to interior occupants, these systems really do well because there are no odors and there is no noise. And it's providing you with a premium, premium single ply installation. Some of the warranty coverage you can get, you can get uh, puncture coverage. Well, punctures are generally the biggest concern of anybody when it comes to a single ply roof. So with a fleece back system, you generally can get puncture coverage and that's coverage in terms of man hours per year to go up and fix any punctures that you may have. So look into it. In summary, when you specify a fleece back single ply system, you're getting a much tougher and durable single ply roof. Whichever type of single ply roof you like, whether it's EPDM, PVC, or TPO, you're greatly enhancing the durability of that particular type of sheet. You'll greatly enhance the wind uplift resistance. And with that urethane adhesive, you're gonna minimize that thermal loss due to the thermal conductivity of screws and plates. With the fleece, you have great hail resistance, the best in the roofing business. And you have no VOCs, no odors. In some cases, it's a totally non-penetrating roof. At this point in time, I'm gonna see if there are any questions. And then I'm gonna move over. And if I can, I'd like to take a few minutes to tell you about some exciting new products from Carlisle Syntec. All right, let's take a look at some exciting new products from Carlisle. Carlisle is part of Carlisle Companies and sales in 2017 exceeded 4 billion and Carlisle Construction Materials uh, sales exceeded 2.5 billion. And true manufacturer of all three different types of single ply, EPDM, PVC, and TPO. True manufacturer of polyiso and expanded polystyrene and adhesives for these membranes. New product is called Rapid Lock. Very excited about this new innovative product because it solves a lot of problems. It's the hook and loop, it's Velcro. And Velcro has been around for a long, long time. And it's very, very tough and it's very, very durable. And you might think to yourself, can Velcro hold a membrane in place? And the answer is absolutely yes, it can because it has an FM 1-90 approval. That's 90 pounds per square foot of uplift pressure. This comes in EPDM or TPO. It's going to be available in PVC by the end of 2018. It has a 20 year warranty, which includes two inch hail and 90 mile per hour is available. So you simply put down an a innovative substrate board that has a special facer on it. And then you'll blow that off and make sure it's very, very clean and free of any dust. 
There's a removable liner on the bottom side of the sheet so you can position it without it sticking in place. And then you'll pull that release liner. It's a 10 foot width on the membrane and that release is at a five foot center mark. And you'll simply slide the membrane in place, roll, uh, broom it in, and wrinkles come out very easily because there's air movement on the underside of the sheet. And then roll it in with a 150 pound weighted roller. This was the product of the year at the 2018 International Roofing Expo. And it is a highly innovative product. I hope you enjoyed today's presentation. I'm Greg Jones and I can be reached at 704-575-2446. Again, if you have any questions that come up later, shoot me a, a call, text, or email at greg at premier bldgproducts.com. And again, I appreciate your time and attention today. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time.